Hi everybody, I want to give you an update on what's going on here <coughs> with the Bedini circuit. I got my iron core and uh, it seems to be doing a very good job. This thing has been running for about four days and my little light bulb burned out. But I'm getting more charging voltage. So that's very strange. Uh, so it's been running about four days straight, no problems, same speed, uh, I've been switching the batteries back and forth, and it's making a, a constant charge on both, I'll give you those readings here in a minute. Um, I want to talk to you about a couple more things first, actually you know what, let me give you the readings and uh, I'll talk to you about a few things, so hold on. Okay, after two days on this battery, it's still running at 12.29 volts. And as you saw on the <coughs> charging battery, it was 13.11. So I'm going to switch it up, rather run another two days, and then uh, let you guys know what the results are on that. Uh, I did make a new circuit. Real quick, I want to show you that. I put a larger resistor. Actually, yeah, smaller, I guess. Uh, smaller ohm resistor. It's only a, a 10 ohm resistor at 10 watts. It's that ceramic one right there. And what I did was I hooked that directly to the pot and then hook the light off the charging coil, that, that little yellow light there. So, All right, how's it going? I want to show you guys uh, a little bit about what I'm thinking and uh, I don't have time to replicate all this stuff so I need you guys' help out there to experiment with things. Um, I found some gold at the junkyard there's a premium performance coil off of a, an 87 LeBaron, Chrysler LeBaron. I got that for $5 and it produces about 38,000 volts. Along with that came a capacitor to capture the back EMF. Uh, done in 1987, I guess they knew what that was and did something about it. This capacitor, I looked on Mopar parts and to replace this is $33. This performance coil to replace this is about $55 and I paid five bucks for it so it's very cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a resistor up to the positive part of the coil to reduce the uh, uh, current going through this sucker because it's going to produce 38,000 volts and uh, I'm going to pulse it with the Bedini circuit off of the pulsing side and run the electrolyzer off it and see what happens. I'm hopefully going to have very small amps because uh, I don't want to kill myself. Uh, the idea is, in my opinion, my theories are it's not only uh, the volts we have to push through, but it's creating the right frequency of either the stainless steel uh, pipes like Stan Meyer had or the frequency of the water. One of those two is going to help destabilize the water to produce more hydrogen. So I wanted to, I don't know if you guys uh, saw the Mythbusters when they broke the wine glass with um, sound. All they did was duplicate the tone of the glass and it created uh, such instability that the glass shattered. And I think that we can do that with water. So with, uh, with uh, uh, the frequencies that we create inside the water bath uh, through, through the cells. So that's another theory that you know, I have to test uh, with either pulsing the motor with the cell or hooking up directly uh, a relay off of that I'm going to try that out and then eventually uh, get a pulse width modulator to test that out. So 
<clears throat> the next circuit I'm going to build is with the coil hooking it up pulsing uh, through the relay or the pulse motor and having the coil go directly into my cells and hopefully I don't blow up and we'll go from there. So any anyway, any thoughts on that, let me know and thanks for watching. Bye.